Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of iWoofs. I'm here today with my dad, Dr. Ian Dunbar. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about dog dog reactivity. Uh, this is a very big topic. It's kind of complicated. There's a lot of issues at play. And so this will not be our only iWoof on this topic. I think we're actually going to do a series of them. But today, hmm. I wanted us to start by talking about what the causes of reactivity are. And I think that's an important place to, you know, lay some groundwork and then we'll move on to things like preventing reactivity and resolving reactivity in later episodes. So, Dad, um, what is, I guess, no, before what is the cause of dog, dog reactivity, we should just briefly, I think, explain what we're using as our definition for dog-dog reactivity. In my mind, I was thinking this is dogs who react uncontrollably at the sight of other dogs. Does that mm -hmm. sound about right to you? Yeah. Okay. The lunging on leash usually, mm -hmm. barking, growling. Mm -hmm. It's predominantly an on leash, let's put it this way. It's much worse on leash. Right. Um, and um, it's usually unfamiliar dogs. I mean, if dogs are off leash and are allowed to get on with it on their own, mm -hmm. it usually works out so easily and so quickly. Right. Human intervention would be the number one cause. <laughs> right, right. So, so yeah, the way dog-dog reactivity is playing out for 90% of these people is they're walking their dog on leash, they see another dog, the dog sees another dog, and their dog starts barking, lunging, growling, snapping, that sort of thing. Yeah? Yeah, and that's, it appears suddenly, that's the other thing, that, mm -hmm. you know, their, their puppy is playful, uh, he's friendly, he's full of confidence, and often, say, if they have another dog at home with the puppy, their complaint is it's over-friendly and overconfident. keeps bugging the adult dog, won't leave it alone. Mm -hmm. And it's now learning to play with the play style of mm -hmm. an adult dog. Mm -hmm. And you can see a big change first night in puppy class where a puppy you know, hides under the chair and the owner looks shocked. Yeah. And so you realize they'd never seen this before. And yeah. so I just ask, you know, how many other dogs do you have at home? And sure enough, this shepherd pup is growing up with two adult shepherds. Yeah. But now the puppy is in an unfamiliar space mm -hmm. with 11 other unfamiliar puppies, unfamiliar people, and his two best friends and bodyguards are at home. He has to right. stand on his own four paws now. Yeah. And it's a shock. But it's so quickly resolvable if yeah. we do it then. Yeah. Okay, so why do you think the dogs who are reacting towards other dogs, why are they behaving that way? What do you think is motivating this behavior? Um, I think not enough preparation for being for meeting unfamiliar dogs on a walk. Mm -hmm. and it's very different playing with a dog you know at home than when you're on a walk. You don't know who's coming around the corner. Mm -hmm. And of course, they could be lacking in social savvy too. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes one reaction for the owners to get really upset and worried, and mm -hmm. now they stop walking. Well, they stop walking at 6 p.m. Instead, they do it at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. Well, the only dogs you're going to meet there are dogs that can't be walked at 4 a.m. Right. And so the, the socialization just stops dead. And I think the reason why dogs aren't prepared for this, because a lot of them are living in a social vacuum for four weeks, you know, after playing with their litter mates all day, every day, mm -hmm. you know, until they're about eight weeks old, then they come to a new home. And of course the vets say quite rightly, don't take them where there's possibly infected doggy urine and feces. Right. Um, and so they don't take the dog outside. And instead of thinking, well, we can safely, socialize our young puppy you know with dogs if we carried them or mm -hmm. carted them to a dog park mm -hmm. or took a car drive and parked in a car parking lot outside of a dog park so the dog can see other dogs it can hear other dogs and above all it can smell them yeah and 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 even if dogs did go nose to nose that would be comparatively risk-free for the, the, the big diseases we, we think about, you know, parvo, leptospirosis, mm -hmm. and, heaven forbid, distemper. It's spread through urine and feces, so right. it's sniffing the ground that's bad. So nose-to-nose -nose contact would only be a problem for, say, kennel cough, to which they'll get vaccinations. Mm -hmm. But if one dog has kennel cough in the community, they're all going to get it. 
Mm -hmm. All the unvaccinated dogs will get it really quickly. Yeah. So obviously you don't want your dog, you know, greeting other dogs. Right. But handheld, in the car, a pram, push it around, mm -hmm. um, and in the car. Right. And, and then they can, you know, they see dogs play. They're not stupid. Yeah. They think, that's like the, the, the other things at the kennel where I grew up. Wow, yeah. that's my people. Yeah. You know, I love them. So you were saying, you know, like in terms of why the dogs are reacting this way, lack of preparation, lack of sufficient socialization. Do you think that means that most of these dogs are afraid of other dogs? Do you think that they want to play? Do you think that sometimes it's a little of both? Um, what is like, do you think, do you think, how much do you think it's fear based? And how much do you think it's excitement or desire to play? Based? Well, I think it's conflict between the two mm -hmm. when we video our reactive dogs um and if you listen to them you think oh my word they're killing each other but if you replay with the volume down mm -hmm. you see they become more wolfy mm -hmm. where they vacillate between oh there's a dog i want to approach i want to play oh i'm scared i'm scared i'm scared and they okay. approach back off and they vacillate very quickly it's the only time when they're sort of whole demeanor resembles that, you know, wolfy vacillation. Normally right. dogs are, oh, I think I'll go and approach that person and destroy their picnic. You know, uh -huh. I mean, they have one goal at a time. So it's but wolves definitely are kind of known for this oh, back and forth. Wolves can never make up their mind okay. whether they trust this other wolf, yeah. let alone a person or another animal yeah. or not. The one time they are solely directed is on the hump. Yeah. And now we're after that spoor and we're going to, when we see it, catch up with it and yeah. then it's dinner. Yeah. But the other thing is, I think owners misinterpret what is normal play for an animal mm -hmm. that's been in this social vacuum for four weeks. So he's not certain. He knows he wants to play. He knows he must play because it's so hardwired into dogs because play is such a very important behavior right. for learning social savvy, the, the appropriate context of all the behaviors in their, their repertoire, um, and for developing bite inhibition. Mm -hmm. And that is it's the number one quality a puppy must develop to yeah. make it safe as an adult because, you know, they, they will be teased and, and, you know, people provoking them as adults um, or scared by other dogs. And should they ever lunge and snap or nip or get into a full contact dog fight, there will be no damage. Yeah. And that means every option is now open to the owner to resolve it. Yeah. But if you haven't got the bite inhibition and in one fight, your dog is putting punctures in another dog, um, there is no trainer on the planet who can resolve that. Yeah. They can stop it with, yeah. you know, but they can't resolve it so the dog is safe. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting point that you made just now about how... Oh, goody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, among the, the blizzard of interesting points, there was one point I wanted to pick out in particular, um, which I think is a lot about kind of like who we are as dog trainers, what we believe in. This notion that the dog knows they need to play because play is a necessary thing for oh, dogs. Because yeah. yeah. dogs are social animals, they're pack animals. A dog does not live on its own. And the way that you learn to navigate social interactions is through play. And, you know, the, the point you made about bite inhibition being like the one very specific definitive thing that you absolutely need to learn is just one of many things that you learn from play, this kind of social savvy about how to engage with other dogs. Yeah, the two be-alls of a dog's existence, mm -hmm. you know, it's raison d'etre, uh, yeah. if I may exercise my French. Oui, oui. Oui, um, oui. Uh, sniffing uh -huh. and play. Yeah. And of course, if you have a reactive dog, you're just taking play out of the picture. You've only got half a dog. His quality of life has just gone down the toilet. Yeah. That's why I think there's some urgency to resolve it. Yeah. Now, I would, this is our cue. I, I, well, I've got the talking stick. Well, right? you, you were already talking. This is the so. talking. Well, I didn't want you to chip in with another oh, okay. question yeah. before I said, Good, I was, I was ready. I think it's fear based and vacillation. Yeah. But the problem is almost entirely created, albeit unintentionally, by human intervention. Yeah. There's no question about it. Yeah. They stop socialization at any worry when they misinterpret normal dog behavior. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
dogs have arguments. We have arguments. Yeah. You know, a dog may grab another dog in anger, yeah. like we grab other people. Yeah. But it's so unusual for us to put a person, especially a loved one, yeah. in hospital for treatment. Yeah. And so it is with dogs. And in fact, when I survey people in my classes, I surveyed about 5,000 owners in my classes, and, it, and I ask them questions. Have you ever had an argument with the people? Every hand goes up. Yeah. Have you ever grabbed someone in anger? Now, that's interesting. One or two people don't put their hand up. So I invite them to lunch. I think these are people I want to stick around. Right? Uh -huh. And then do but, you mercilessly tease them and, <laughs> no, and try to no, provoke no, them? No, I, I don't, I don't uh -huh. provoke. It's like, um, so never... Never grabbed anyone, eh? No. Never grabbed anyone? Never grabbed anyone. Got your ear. Got your ear. Got your nose. <laughs> and, uh, boom. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I... <laughs> right. I think that's another important question. Do you own a firearm? Yeah. Yes. Never grabbed anyone. But Shot when I them. ask them, right, this is a very important question, and I don't want you to see if anyone responds yes. So close your eyes. Mm -hmm. I'll ask the question. Put up your hand up if the answer's yes. And then I'll say, put your hand down, open your eyes. Yeah. And so, because I don't want them to see if we have a yes answer. Yeah. And I say, has anyone here ever intentionally hurt someone so badly they had to go to hospital for treatment? Mm -hmm. And a little pause and about one hand goes up. Mm -hmm. And I say, put your hands down. And then I give the results of the, stand, the, the, the questionnaire. I say, well, you're all argumentative and prone to physical violence, but only one person in this room has actually ever hurt anyone. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same percentage when we analyze the fight bite ratios with dogs. Yeah. So for dogs that have been in a yeah. full contact fight, have they ever put that dog in hospital for a bill of more than a thousand dollars? Yeah. Because if you take, you know, after a fight, you go to the vet. I mean, everyone's going to charge you a hundred to five hundred bucks just you know, right. shaving it and antibiotics and stuff. Right. Yeah. I mean, so owner anxiety, I think, is a huge part it's of this, and massive. that is why the next iWorks is going to be all about owner anxiety. Oh, that's cool. So, I like that because uh, everyone thinks it's about dog stress and right. dog anxiety, and we resolve that pretty and so, quickly. But we forget. No, it's the owner. Yeah. If they're anxious. They can't walk their dog without right. it reacting. So with that in mind, I'd like you to list, or do your best to list, kind of all the different ways that anxiety plays a role in dog-dog reactivity. Oh. For all the different parties involved. It's, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Okay. So on, I say it's much more common on leash. And the reason for that is when the dog gets the leash tight, gets tension in the leash, you lose its attention because it's now got a telegraph wire which transmits what your intentions are, what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. It also G's the dog up. If there's any pull and give on the leash, if it's a solid straight leash, that's okay, like mm -hmm. you tie the dog to a post. But if you give and take, that's mm -hmm. exactly how we train dogs to lunge, mm -hmm. you know, say in working dog sports. And it takes quite a lot of skill but this is where owners are incredible trainers. Right. They, they, but Some people are natural at it. It's sad they're teaching the wrong thing. But I always like to give owners reassurance. And I'll say, well, it's pretty obvious to me that this problem is mainly you and you've trained it into your dog. But here's the good news. You're an exceptional trainer. And when I teach you different skills, you'll get this out of the dog and you'll give the dog then the gift of, of confidence. Yeah. So number one, the owner's anxiety will G up the dog before you know it. Mm -hmm. So now we have a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. You know, the dog reacts or the dog goes still and looks at another dog and the owner's like, no, 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 steady, rover, 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 be, be good, be good. It's okay, it's okay. They'll even stroke it at this point, mm -hmm. to, to really get it to stand still and stare, like, oh, she likes it when I, I stare and eyeball this other dog, you know? Mm -hmm. So now the dog is more worked up, so now the owner's more worked up, and it's yeah. until the dog can't control himself and can't be controlled by the owner, who's mm -hmm. suddenly out of control. But it's even more complicated than that. Oh, do tell. Well, here's this person coming around the corner, well with a totally friendly little cockapoo, mm -hmm. or it could be a Labrador. They know they have a few issues with, yes. and they think, oh, no. Because they see this dog and owner out of control. Right. As soon as they go, oh, no, their dog is, oh, no, not again. Because, you see, 
if I interviewed the owner and say, well, tell me what happens when you see another dog. And most owners say, well, I, I tense up and I lose my confidence. Yeah. So I self-awareness. I love interviewing the dog and I, I'll get on my knees. I'm being serious. Yeah. And I say, so dog, tell me about your owner. And the dog replies to me, I mean, because I understand dog and I'm fluent. Yeah. And they say, well, you know, she's, she's a wonderful owner and she's very trustworthy, good temperament, well-bred, good genes, yeah. obviously Scandinavian stock, you know, something like this. But when she sees another dog, especially a lab, or a black lab, mm -hmm. she goes crazy and she pulls me in on the leash really quickly. She, her voice gets all shrieky, yeah. like, no, no, don't do that. So now when I see another dog, I have to tell him, you know, don't come this way. Go back, go back. She's unstable. She can't be trusted. Yeah. So this interaction between two owners, two dogs goes, <laughs> and it does that in about a second. Yeah. So, and it's all fear-based, anxiety, lack of confidence. And I always look on like puppy classes. I, I, I introduce them, say, I know you're a little nervous. It's your first night in class. Like I did a first night in class, didn't I, last week? You did. <laughs> and I was so scared. Dad went to hot yoga yeah, a couple no, days well, ago. Well, Bikram. Bikram hot yoga. Yeah, so it follows the sequence. Right. I, I was petrified and I am and so, even last night yeah. when I went back for the second class you had to talk me down and say you've got to do it dad you'll feel good I am good. so proud of and, my and dad thank for you. doing something stressful thank you yeah of course dad <laughs> I loved it I yeah. loved it and um, anyway where were we what was I saying um anxiety oh when they come to puppy class, puppy class yeah. I say we're going to give your dogs a wonderful thing in this class the gift of confidence mm -hmm. around unfamiliar people and unfamiliar dogs. So you'll go puppy one, puppy two, by which they stay in puppy two till your dog's a year old. Well, now you're going on walks, on leash walks, off leash trails, dog yeah. parks, and you will be able to watch your dog brimming with confidence, not only having a good time himself, but giving confidence to other dogs. Yeah. The wonderful thing about social savvy, it works two ways. And when a dog with good social savvy has it, they see a dog that's scared and they totally slow down. It's, uh, you see it in puppy class, first week, mm -hmm. that you'll see a, a bruiser of a, you know, like a lab type play style or a little pit who plays with an adult dog at home, you know, uh -huh. like full on. And then there's a little shih tzu in class that goes whoa and sits down or hides under a chair and this dog immediately turns it off. And so that the little, little dog turns it off? No, the big no, dog. The, big the dog. one with the big play style. Yeah, uh -huh. and so usually after the first week or the second week, <clears throat> I line the owners up and say, little dog owners here, big dog mm -hmm. owners there, and I suggest they thank each other. Yeah. I say, little dog owners, Thank these guys with big dogs who've yeah. given your dog confidence and taught it what to do when stressed. You must sit. You must not yelp. You must not squeak. You must not run. Right. It will incite dogs to chase and pounce on you. If you sit, they will know. She's scared. Turn them off. Yeah. Now, you big dog owners, thank the little dog's owners for coming here because they came into class and I saw them looking at your Akita and your Rotti and your Mastiff and and you know your bauble or whatever great monsters we have in class you've given these big dog owners confidence mm -hmm. they now know they can go to a dog park and they won't have their heart in their throat when someone comes in with three little chihuahua poos yeah. or whatever they know my dog's cool but right. and it's it's just beautiful when you see this confidence yeah and because owners and, and, and I, I get them they're scared and but they intervene in the wrong way yeah. to the point that their feedback to the dog is not just incorrect it is 180 degrees out right. of phase counterproductive it, it's so counterproductive it's ridiculous yeah. they're praising the dog when he's barking growling and lunging they're stroking the dog and then when he's fine they ignore him right only to respond again when he is reactive. So they're highlighting right. the reactive behavior. Which is, I mean, I feel like it's the original sin of uh, owner dog training, you know, the ignoring the good and it is. reinforcing the bad unintentionally. It's that human foible. Well, Dad, 
Thank you very much. I think this is a great start. I think we touched on a lot of things that we're going to dive deeper into in future episodes, but I think we're going to wrap here for this first uh, reactivity series episode. So That's thank good. you very much. Well, thank you for inviting me, Jamie. Well, yes. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have you here in the studio. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you all for uh, watching or listening, as the case may be. And uh, we'll see or you'll hear us next time. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.